I'm getting ready to start my next major project. This Series 1 Bridgeport Mill has been sitting in my shop since April. I found it listed on the local Craigslist as a quote-unquote project from a machine shop that was downsizing. I met with the owner and we negotiated a little bit and agreed upon a price and then I uh, rented a hydraulic drop deck trailer and brought it home. Based on the serial number, the base was made in 1976. I assume the head was made at the same time, but there doesn't seem to be a database available for those numbers, at least that I could find that would tell me for sure. It has plenty of problems and is nowhere near ready to use. Definitely a quote unquote project. I've just had some other things in the shop that I wanted to get done first. Plus I needed it to make some room in the shop budget. I bought it knowing I was going to have to spend some more to get it ready, but I still feel like I got a really good deal on it. I figured I would make this short video about the machine in its current state and try to point out the things that I need to correct. As you might be able to tell, the motor is not attached to the head. That's the way it came to me, but a little more on that later. But if we look a little closer, we can see that there's a few more things that are wrong here. There's supposed to be an oil cup in this hole, and that's to oil the main spindle bearings. Now it could be that the bearings have been replaced with sealed bearings, but I doubt it. You'll also notice that the speed range selector handle needs to be replaced. And there's a few small things here and there, like the handle for the quill lock is just a socket head cap screw. Not a big deal, um, but I just might make a new handle on the lathe anyway. The quill itself moves up and down freely. I do have the stock handle, but a friend of mine gave me this better handle for it. The stop for the power down feed is missing the feed trip lever. But the power down feed does seem to work just fine. If I turn the spindle manually, it, it will engage both up and down. I can see it moving. and I can manually force it to trip. And I have no idea of the condition of the brake. It might be just fine, but if I'm going to tear it down anyway, I'm likely to replace any wear parts. There's no handle for the ram pinion. I just have a bolt stuck in there for now. And it's likely just another part I will make on the knee, the screw that holds in the gib is missing. Um, no idea what happened to it. The table is in overall great shape. There are only a couple places where Bozo came to visit, none of which are cause for any concern at all. I think once I get the surface rust off of it, it's going to shine up really, really nicely. The X-axis has a power feed on it. It's a Bridgeport 6F, um, and it does work, sort of. If I plug it in, it does turn, but there's currently no oil in the mechanism, and there is a broken gear inside of it. Um, I already sourced a replacement gear for it. It's just a matter of uh, tearing this thing down and replacing that gear and putting it back together. One thing that drew me to this particular machine is that the ways are chrome plated. Hopefully this will be a good indication of how the mating surfaces have worn. 
I, again, I won't know for sure until I get everything apart and I can flip it upside down. The Y and Z axis cranks both operate freely and smoothly. There's only about one thousandths of backlash in the knee and only about five in the saddle. The X axis crank works just fine. The table moves back and forth, but it does have more noticeable backlash right now, about 45 thousandths. But I should be able to adjust a good bit of that out. When I moved the mill, I removed the table so it would fit through the door between my garage and my shop. And I didn't readjust anything after I put it back together. There is also a Bijor one-shot oil underneath all that gunk mounted to the side of the machine base. I did pull up on the handle and it appears to be okay but what oil that's still in it has turned into something that doesn't flow all that well. Plus all the lines will still need to be cleaned or replaced. I would imagine they've coagulated and are clogged. Here's that two horsepower motor that should be up on the head. When I bought the mill, the motor had a damaged shaft. The key had come loose or something and it did a number on the shaft and one of the cone pulleys in the variable speed mechanism. It was unsalvageable, so I had the shaft and rotor replaced and had the motor rewired for 240 volts. Well, that's the list. That's about everything that I know I will need to do for it. I'm sure I'll find other things. And there's some other little things like new way wipers. There's some missing screws, other small parts in the variable speed mechanism. I'd also like to get a DRO installed on it right away. And since I bought the machine, I've also started collecting some tooling that I know I'm gonna want or need in order to make the machine useful some of which I will also want to take apart, clean, and probably paint. When I bought the mill, the seller threw this Kurt-style milling vise in for an extra 125 bucks. I'm sure it's an import. I'll probably ditch the swivel base. I found this Bridgeport vise at an auction and bid on it and won. And to be honest, the only reason why I bought it was because it's branded as a bridge port. At the same auction, I picked up this Stevens 8-inch rotary table. It looks to be in perfect shape, if not a bit dirty. And I'll have to keep an eye out for a chuck to go on it. And as luck would have it, I also won this Van Norman dividing head with all of the dividing plates. Keith Rucker's website, vintagemachinery.org, has scans of the index plate table as well as a cross-sectional diagram. That diagram should make it easier for me to disassemble it and clean it. The only thing that was missing wasn't part of this lot or any other lot was the tailstock for it. I stumbled across this tailstock though in the used tool bin at a rural hardware store about 20 minutes from my home for 20 bucks. I couldn't go wrong. It's a bit bigger than what the dividing head needs, but I think I can make this work. I have a few hold down kits attached to the wall back there and a bunch of R8 collets and mills and holders sitting in a drawer. I still want to find a good drill chuck, a boring head, and maybe I'll make a fly cutter when the time comes. All of this should keep me busy for quite a while. I do hope to make a number of videos of the disassembly and reassembly. I've never done this before, so I will be relying on a lot of the resources already out there, such as those from H&W Machine and Keith Fenner. These won't be so much 
of a how to do it video series, but more of a how I did it video series, mistakes and all. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more videos, please hit that like button. It does so much for the growth of the channel. And we'll see you on the next one.